Hi, I'm Dr. Craig Chappell at Intuit Medical, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about carpal tunnel. Somebody you know probably has carpal tunnel if you don't have it yourself. Uh, it, 12 million Americans have carpal tunnel uh, syndrome every year, and there's a lot of misconceptions about what carpal tunnel syndrome is and what carpal tunnel syndrome is not. For instance, if you treat your neck in some form or fashion or by adjustment and your carpal tunnel symptoms get better, you probably didn't have carpal tunnel syndrome. So let me go through some anatomy and teach you what carpal tunnel syndrome is, or at least demonstrate uh, some of these facts to you. This is ultrasound. I use ultrasound for uh, diagnostics and uh, therapeutic purposes. But the first thing I'd like to demonstrate here is with ultrasound is we can now evaluate the median nerve. In this case, you see it in the screen, we call this a honeycomb appearance. You see lots of black dots in the median nerve, and below it, the structures, if you wiggle your fingers for us, are the tendons that go to the fingers. So that's a pretty cool uh, shot of, of what we can see. If I scan down a little bit further towards the fingers, I'll begin to see this, this shadow, this arch that goes over the top. That arch inserts over here on this bone called the pisiform. There's the ulnar artery there, and I follow that arch back up over the other side, and it inserts on another bone in the wrist called the scaphoid. This forms the entrance to the carpal tunnel. So I have bones below, a ligament above, and it's encapsulated or encircled by this connective tissue, and that's what forms the tunnel, hence carpal tunnel syndrome. So what happens in carpal tunnel syndrome is there's no space to move. The ligament's pretty tight, the bones aren't gonna move, and the softest structure in this tunnel is the median nerve. When the median nerve becomes compressed, it gets angry and sick and it swells. There's already not extra space in the tunnel, so if the nerve gets bigger, it's kind of a downward spiral. But that's how carpal tunnel syndrome uh, basically occurs. Symptoms usually include numbness in the hand, but specifically the thumb, the second finger, the middle finger, and the ring finger. Usually half of the ring finger is, a, is affected. If it's been going on a long time, you can get weakness or a wasting of this muscle in your thumb called the thenar muscle. So those are things to watch for. Uh, usually, in most people with symptomatic carpal tunnel symptoms, they'll wake up at night with their hands numb or painful, and it requires them to shake them to wake them back up or to get the pain to go away. That's very, very common with carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome, because it does affect a nerve, can radiate up the arm, into the shoulder, or even into the neck, but can't be treated from anywhere but the carpal tunnel, if it's carpal tunnel syndrome. So now I'd like to talk about a little bit of treatment options. If your symptoms are mild, you can wear night splints. Those work pretty well. You can participate in physical therapy. That works very well. And that generally helps to resolve some of the symptoms. If the symptoms persist, then we may need to discuss surgery or surgical options uh, if, if, if it comes to that. Prior to surgery, you could try a corticosteroid injection, which would also be helpful. Sometimes makes the symptoms go away for a period of time and sometimes doesn't work too, too well at all. If this, the corticosteroid injection does help, that's a good indication that maybe surgery would be a good uh, treatment uh, option for you. As far as establishing the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome, Patient history or symptoms are very, very good for that. Another way is something called a nerve conduction study in which we measure how fast the electricity moves down the, down the nerve and how healthy the nerve is, which has been uh, the most common test. Now, using ultrasound, we can measure the area of the nerve, and generally, an area bigger than 10 millimeters squared would indicate you have a good chance of having carpal tunnel sy sy syndrome. In the presence of a large nerve and symptoms, it's just as good as a nerve conduction study. And so we can avoid, now with imaging and history, we can avoid uh, sometimes painful or irritative nerve conduction studies. So as far as treatment is concerned with carpal tunnel syndrome, the standard of treatment has been what's been re referred to as a mini open procedure. A mini open procedure uh, basically has been used for many, many years and works very, very well incises the skin overlying the transverse carpal ligament, which we talked about earlier, the top of the, or the roof. And if I draw a mark here, the incision is generally about two centimeters long. So that's an example of what happens today. 
The problem with this procedure, it works very well, is that you have to dissect and cut or interrupt a lot of tissue in order to get to your target. So there's another procedure that's been done very well at the same time called the endoscopic release, in which this incision is about half the size of the mini open and is performed in this manner, and an endoscope is inserted up under the transverse carpal ligament and, and, and it's also cut. It also works very well and it heals a little bit faster than the open procedure, both of which work very, very well. Now, there's a microinvasive way to perform the procedure. This requires a four millimeter incision, which is about that long, so half or less than half of what the endoscopic release is, hence a quicker healing time. So the problem with the, the carpal tunnel release is the healing time. Nobody can take four weeks off work, which can happen with the open a release, a couple weeks off work with the endoscopic release, and now my average is about four days off a week with the microinvasive release. The microinvasive release is performed with this device by Sonics. Uh, we make the small incision on the wrist, all done with local anesthetic, insert the device, and then work it up underneath the transverse carpal, carpal ligament with imaging or ultrasound. So everything is done visualized. So the risks may be a little bit lower than with the open procedures. The healing time is much quicker. And like I say, most of our, our patients are back to work in, in four days. In a little bit of a demo how this works, the small device is inserted through the skin and I'll take the roof of this uh, carpal tunnel off, and we slide the device up next to the nerve, which is demonstrated here in yellow, um, and underneath the ligament, which is our goal. That's the only thing we really want to cut during this procedure. This device is kind of cool in that it's equipped with these balloons that blow up on either side of the uh, device, pushing the nerve and the other structures we don't want to hit out of the way. After the balloons are deployed, I can see the structures that I want to hit and don't want to hit in imaging so I don't have to dissect down onto them. And then a little blade pops up and cuts the transverse carpal ligament. I deflate the balloons and we're done. The whole procedure generally takes anywhere from six to eight minutes um, to perform. So it's, and as far as healing, like I said, there's very little downtime. There's no splinting or casting afterwards and it works very well. So I'm pretty excited about this procedure. Hopefully this will help you understand carpal tunnel it's, and it's treatment a little bit better. Thanks.